banter, banter. banter. I don't know what we're going to banter. Let's about. talk about this. So last year, uh, I got picked on for not having, we talked about this Monday, for not having as good a mustache as Elsas. Mm-hmm. So now you and I, I believe, uh, other than, I guess, technically, we're not allowed to talk about it, but Josh is doing Movember. Uh, he has received no financial compensation and or have I received anything about college football from him, if anyone catches this ever. Mm-hmm. But uh, the wink was for Josh. Anyways, I would like to add that a lot of guys have just shaved everything but their mustaches, not TF2B guys, but like friends of mine. Mm-hmm. I understand. Like someone looked at me at the bar tonight. One of my coworkers said, so you're doing November. I said, yeah, they said, so you grew that in two days. <laughs> yeah. And it's not good. Like not I, I don't, I don't, but the thing is I, I do like a straight razor on everything. Same. Like, well, not uh, clippers. Okay. So like I have like the stubble and it's the same length everywhere. Mm-hmm. So like if I would have left my whole face, the same as this, my whole face would be that exact length. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like, I yeah. wasn't prepared for a mustache mm-hmm. when I decided to make this. I should have just gone clean shaven, but then I would have looked weird yeah. in a new city. It, it got in my head, but hashtag yeah. shout out charity and cores for uh, publishing charity. So hashtag charity. Yeah. Hashtag, hashtag charity. charity. Um, cores, the official beer of charity. I, I don't think your stash looks that bad. I'm being honest. No, it's just like, I feel French. Like it's very minuscule in size and length. Like it doesn't stretch out far. Mm hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh-huh. it's just kind of like, it's just like you could have drawn this with pencils, whereas yours overlaps the lips and has Ron Burgundy uh-huh. type of vibes to it. Like uh-huh. mine feels like I'm the butler who also did murder people because he was in love with the princess. Mm, I gotcha. Yeah. I my, Mine's thick, but like, yes. I, see, my mustache grows thick in. Boy. It is a thick boy. It grows in much better than the rest of my facial hair. Like for the most part, like oh. I, you know, like m- the rest of it grows in okay. But I still have like patches like here and there. Like it's not like the best beard ever. But the sash grows in strong. It's just I can't go all year looking like this. It just it's not. It can't work. Looking like a narc. I yeah. actually hear me out. I uh, the nicest part about moving away from Pittsburgh is that no one knows me. And no one knows anything about what I normally do with my face. Mm-hmm. So if I would have came down here in a mustache, no one have thought twice about it. Mm-hmm. People now go like this one girl I'm good friends with was like, yo, like you have a mustache. Mm-hmm. And I said, uh, oh, I didn't know that you hated charity. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's been my counter argument, man. You know, people are like, oh, you have a mustache that looks like it sucks. I go, damn, I didn't know you hated charity. Dunked. Dunk. Nice. All right, yeah, let's get started. Boom, ba, boom, 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 boom. What's up, guys? It's uh, it's Officer Farva here with All Purpose Garbage. Uh, JK, it's just me, your boy Smalls, uh, college football show for idiots. And of course I'm here with my boy Deke. Deke, how's it going, hey, brother? Gang. Good buddy. It's going good, man. A lot happened this weekend. We had a nice little banter, banter talk. So I'm geeked to get into it, but I'm, I'm doing good. How about yourself? Not bad, man. Not bad. Uh, the stashes look good and we'll get into it. It does. It um, does. But, uh, Deke, before we jump into Movember, um, are you drinking anything tonight? I'm not my good friend. But if you were, uh, if I were, it'd be a Coors Light. I need mm-hmm. to go pick up some more. Uh, I had friends in this past weekend. I drank all of my Coors, so I need to go pick up more for this weekend. But shout out to Coors PGH, everyone. This Monday, Steelers play the Cleveland Browns on Monday Night Football in Pittsburgh. Go to the Insermob Tailgate. Coors is sponsoring it. We are helping sponsor. Uh, shout out to Lots on the Bench. Dre will be doing his video. So shout out to Coors PGH. They are delicioso i will also be there i'm going back Woo, I'm getting you got back, back in town yep getting back in town look at you got my pto all straight so i'm hell yeah i'm fucking pumped yeah flying back on friday so um all right few things um actually j- really just one thing besides the shout out course um november so if you guys can't tell i look like a police officer and derek looks like a french butler 
Um, this month, if you guys have not seen anything on social, um, we are doing Movember, uh, growing yes, our, our stashes, um, shaved everything else, but the stash, uh, pretty much just trying to r- raise awareness for overall men's health, uh, mental health, um, you know, uh, testicular cancer, prostate cancer, the whole shebang. Uh, it's really, really a great cause. I think it's something that we all kind of get into as well. Um, yeah, dude. so all, half our Twitch money is going towards, uh, our campaign. Y'all can also visit us on our uh, Movember team page. If you, literally, if you just Google Movember thoughts from the bench, it pops up. It did come right up. It was the first yeah. one I tested it because I was like, is he really just telling people to do this? It worked out. Yeah, no, it works. So yeah, you can that donate. Just to, to check. Donate directly that way. Uh, trying to double our total last year. So uh, and course is helping us out with that. So appreciate that. Yeah, our first donation was off of uh, a course person. So yeah, that's Absolutely. amazing. All right, uh, Deke. I'm not going to start with Penn State talk because at this point, wow. I'll get into it. I'll get into why whenever we actually go in, you know, actually right now, uh, not the first thing we're going to talk about, but I think the biggest game of the week was by far Michigan, Michigan State. And the only note I really had here is Harbaugh is going to Harbaugh. He can't win the big games, dude. I okay. So here's the thing. When he they were up big. Yep. Like they were up. And I kept saying, I dude, oh, I wanted to text you so bad. Mm-hmm. I wanted to text you so bad because I was like, one, you hate Harbaugh, which we both yep. kind of hate Harbaugh. But two, you were like, State's got the transfer portal cats, all this and that. Michigan was up big. And I was like, wow, this is it. Like Michigan is going to finally prove they're the better team when both teams are doing really well. And you know what it was? I don't know if I'm going to consider it Michigan blowing it, but I will say State proved they're the better team. Yep. No. So I will say that. I would definitely agree with you there. I think that, well, Kenneth Walker, first of all, is a fucking god. Five toddies. Oh. Like, he oh. is, he's fucking unbelievable. He, if he, if that guy doesn't win the Heisman, I think the Heisman's a joke. Cause, like, he's like, oh, I, dude, you're I don't tell, hate it. I don't hate it. You're telling me, cause he, like, he was the re, now there were a few reasons, but he was the main reason they won that game. He fucking ran for, yeah, like, Five 197 touchdowns. on 23 and insane. five touchdowns, dude. Insane. Yeah. Put the team on his back. Uh, Swear he did, though. But uh, but the thing is, though, Harbaugh, just whatever it is, he can't get it done. In the big games, he cannot get it done. Against um, against Michigan State, he's 3-4 and four since being, since getting to Michigan. Against Ohio yeah. State, he's 0-6. Oh against Penn State, he's 3-3. Three and three. <laughs> And like so, like Penn State, Michigan State, they're kind of equal. But again, it's not like he's dom. He came in, and everyone was like, "Oh, he's gonna dominate." Yeah, the East, and that just clearly has not happened. It's interesting too because, like, I, I, so the last like memory I have of Michigan, Michigan State is obviously the blocked. Uh, was yeah. it punt or field punt? Punt, right? Yeah, yeah, the blocked punt. And uh, it's so funny to me that Michigan gets the hype it does. And I'm going to say something out loud. If Tom Brady wasn't Tom Brady, I don't know if Michigan would get the same amount of hype. Like, I feel like he's the, like, I, they're not correlated very heavily, right? So it's not very much, blah, 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 blah. There's no reason Michigan should be rated higher than Michigan State in the history of college football, in my opinion. Yeah. I, it's, it's weird. They're, it's, they're very equal, and Michigan is always treated like the older brother. Yeah. Well, it's because, it's been that brand for so long, though. That, like they have won natties, they have won natties, but fair, but it, it's been a it's been a long fucking time since they've done anything substantial. Like whether you go back to fucking Rich Rod, Brady Hoke, and like Harbaugh. Granted, it's not like he's a bad coach, but I, he's fucking annoying. But and it's, it's like Michigan are like the Knicks. It's like oh, every year you're gonna do it. Every yeah. year, the, oh, the Knicks fans still believe they're really good in basketball. Oh, you're still still yep. the Knicks. Yep. And it's been upsetting since the 90s. Yeah. Well, I guess 01 or whatever. One been that one. Yeah. But it, it is, it's weird though that, like, I don't know. It's just, it's wild. Be- so I was listening to, uh, what's his name? Joel Klatt talk about yeah. Harbaugh. And he was like, there's an argument saying that Harbaugh is 
what is it, two snaps away from being like five and one against Michigan State? Yeah. And that was before this game. But that's that's not wrong, to be fair. Yeah. And like he he also got gypped out of a call and he I'm you know, Penn State was the benefactors of it. We yes. went to the Big Ten Championship, but they got gypped on a spot against Ohio State that one year. And that was the only yeah. year where I think they were any bit legit. Every other year they get the hype and somehow they blow it. Now, granted, yep. it, the walk off interception was the greatest thing I've ever think I've ever seen. That one handed interception fair. was fucking insane. But it's Michigan. They're Harbaugh's going to Harbaugh, and that's just it is what it is. It, there's a curse on that guy, and I love it. I will I I will go to my grave thinking that I'm shocked that he's still there. If I'm being honest, because as a Michigan, if I was a Michigan fan, I'd be furious, like or at least yeah. frustrated. You know, like like are you yeah. fucking kidding me? Like we got the talent, we got the recruits, and we always get started on a hot note. It just they can never put it together for a full year. My biggest issue with Harbaugh on a very real level is it's this continuation to believe that obviously Harbaugh is a large name. He's been to the Super Bowl. Like he is, I think, a, a good coach for them if they want to be mediocre. Mm-hmm. He has never had a quarterback. And this is a professional NFL level quarterback who played quarterback at Michigan. And I think. The closest he's had is Shea fucking Patterson. And it's not it. It's weird. Like, it doesn't quite make sense why somebody that came there to make quarterbacks want to go to Michigan, which brings me back to the Tom Brady thing. It just is super, super weird for me that he can't recruit a single fucking quarterback that is absolutely blue chip. Like, it's weird. Well, yeah. And if you remember, Shea Patterson came from Ole Miss and he was it. He was yeah. gonna be the guy. Like he was. So, this was it. Harbaugh got his guy. And somehow, somehow, he ruined Shea Patterson. I don't know. And I, that's my biggest issue, dude. Like he made Shea Patterson worse in yes. a situation that he should have gotten better. Early, I loved Shea better. Patterson at Ole Miss when yeah. he transferred to Michigan. I said this is either gonna be the best thing that's <laughs> ever happened to him or the absolute fucking worst. And guess what? Worst it is. Oh, it's a Harbaugh thing, man. It's a Harbaugh right? thing. Yeah. It's so weird. Yeah, his glasses annoy me too. I don't know what it is. Like he just tries to look like like old like time dork. Michigan. Yeah. And it just What's up, nerd? Yeah. Like fucking I'm surprised no. they don't give him wedgies in the locker room. Yeah. They probably do. Gets a yeah, and then he gets shit stains all on his khakis too. Uh I have a question uh about the headline for the next score here, Smalls. Mm-hmm. What's your question? Do you believe that Penn State is better than we thought? Yes, I do. Okay, all right. Yeah, well, sure so a few, it. a few. I meant this in two ways. Penn State is better than I thought. My, the, my team is better than okay. I thought they were. Fair. Um, the game also turned out much better than I thought it would. The game, I will give you. The game was great, and I think that this was. Uh, a middle ground between the Penn State we saw undefeated and the recent Penn State that kind of got their asses handed them. Like this was the Penn State football that I normally tune in to see. Tough, hard nosed football. They're gonna lose. You know what I mean? Like this felt like Penn State coming back to earth both ways. Yep. And well, it was. Yeah, I don't know though because I was watching. So first of all, yep. I've never been more relaxed going into a game. Just because I was like, well, the boys have nothing to lose. Let's nothing just, matters. Like, let's just go in and have some fun, you know? And <laughs> and there for a while, like, the run game kind of worked. The first drive, we ran, what, eight, seven or eight times and passed yeah. once. Like, they, it was the first time all year that the running game looked at least okay. And the defense was stepping up. And re- you can make an argument that it's a different game if it hadn't been for that fumble return for a touchdown like it was yeah like if that hadn't happened what we were down uh, one score we were definitely down uh, only down one score also smalls real quick just because uh breaking news so apologies for breaking news on your show but breaking news the ambridge high school men's soccer team State are playoffs. on to the state let's go playoffs Benny. after a let's go Benny. over charleroi 
Let's go, Are Benny. Are you kidding me? Let's go, Benny. Let's go, Benny. Let's go, Benny. I did text, text him. him. I'm texting him. Yeah, I texted him the other night. He texted me about something else about missing dude. Yeah, no. Good for, good for those boys. Oh, out. my God. Dude, 6 1? Yep. I told him. There's something special going on because that dude, that's a fucking first year head coach. First year dude. he's been a head coach. That's fucking Hear impressive. Out. Hear me out. Hear me out. They should offer Ben Fury a lifetime contract because mm-hmm. Coach O should have mm-hmm. also gotten a lifetime contract. Interesting. Interesting. We got like a Pat Fitzgerald situation going on there. Yeah. I, I don't I don't hate that. I don't hate hate that you at all. You feel it? You feel it? Uh, all right, I'm sorry. Let's go back to no. Penn State sucking ass. Uh, you were saying that in play. Yeah, I, I didn't think they played bad. I didn't yeah. get to watch the game. I watched the highlights uh, yesterday because I knew this would come up in the show. Yep. Um, I don't know. Ohio State also didn't look like. I don't know. Well, the thing is, I don't want to say. I don't want to say that. But well, the thing is, I do think the defense was playing really fucking well. Like yes, yeah, like I agree. The um, the like I said, the difference might have been that fumble return for a touchdown. And if you look at it, this was not on the coaches. This was not yep. on the players. Yep. There were there was one bad call. It was the guy. Uh, what's in, uh, Nick Lovett got pushed out of bounds, or he he stepped out of bounds and he came back in, and they were saying it was an illegal touch that he was pushed. But again, I'm not gonna. Compl- like I'm not gonna like so tough. They're like he didn't instantly try to regain entership yeah. to the field. It's like there's a dude standing there. It's gonna hold him up. Like yeah, and he ended up going for a touchdown because it, like right after the fact. But I'm not even really gonna come. It, it's a different game if that happened, sure. But I'm yeah. not gonna sit here and complain about that because like I th- I feel like we got calls too. So it wasn't like it was. Yeah, it wasn't you know, unfair. Yeah, and what I'll say is uh, the difference in that game was talent. It was not coaching. It was yes. not schemes. It was talent. It wasn't want. Nobody can say they just wanted it more. No, they just talent. they have five stars. It like, was, yeah, that's all it was. It was talent. And if so, last week I said I was gone. I was done with Franklin. And right after I said that, like the next day, started thinking about it a little more. I was like, eh, you were you were very done on Franklin. I was, and it, it's because I was frustrated with the Cliffords. The Clifford thing. I was su- and I'm still really frustrated with that. However, there's an argument to be made, and I've heard it made several times now that you know there's all these rumors about Franklin going all these other places. USC. Yeah, US big one. USC, LSU, maybe like there are tons of rumors about that. Yep, tons of LSU. rumors about you. Yep. Oh, hear me out. He'd be an idiot in my mind. Not to go. To go. Uh. Yeah, it, I, dude, LSU will never match that, and they're chasing. And I get it, dude. They're a big program. Louisiana's a hotbed. They're in the SEC. Franklin would kill it there. Yep. I think LSU is going to be plagued by that season. We still hold Maybe. Texas in the regard of Vince Young. Yeah, that that that's a good point. The po- really though, the thing that LSU has that Franklin does not quite have in state college, they have the resources. That's kind of what Franklin wants right now, and he hasn't right. come out and really said it, but I, he's trying to leverage a lot of shit right now. He's trying to leverage all these rumors into not even necessarily – I don't even know if he wants a pay a pay jump. He's No, he just wants more resources. You're right. He, he's trying to get – he's trying to upgrade facilities, trying to upgrade dorms for freshman football players. He's trying to do all the things that Ohio State, uh, Alabama, all these other – Clemson, all these other schools are doing, and if you want a, a test case for that – Look at Kirby Smart. Kirby Smart yep. did exactly that. He won that battle down there. Georgia gave yep. in, and look at them now. They got the recruits, and they. I think they will be good for a while. Long time. And oh, yeah. Georgia is a perennial powerhouse yep. at this point. It remains to be seen if Franklin will win that battle. That's what I'll say. And, Agreed. But I think, if anything, it's a testament to him. Like This weekend was a number one reason you look at the talent on the field. Fair. We were not a coach. Like that's why Penn State gets like the top recruiting classes and stuff, and they always have a decent. It's getting better. Class. It's getting better, but it only I, get, only gets you so far. It's like, just it feels very capped. It doesn't feel like you guys are ever going to get like a top 
number one overall like the way that oregon gets one or the way i don't know there's something about penn state and i don't mean this you know disrespectfully no, but like yeah. oregon gets Thibodeau. you look at uh, jimmy on clowny yep. going to south carolina like all these weird situations in college football where it's like they were born there or it's just they like the coach i just don't believe penn state will ever stumble on that guy and well, it's, i don't i don't know how to explain it right now we do we uh we Sorry, we have signed the number one quarterback in the nation out okay. of high school for the class of 2022, Drew Aller. So we do have that guy, and I think we might also have the number one running back. So where's do you know where they're from? Is it Pennsylvania, Buffalo, I think or it uh, might be Ohio. New York, Maryland? I think okay. Aller might be Ohio. I could be wrong about that. I'm not sure. Okay. No, I, I, I stand but, corrected that I guess they do have it, that but guy. It doesn't, but like, it doesn't. The thing is, yeah, you might have that guy, but you're not going to get the rest of the guys you're not going to get yep. as highly total, like as high of a rated class, like t- as a total package as some of these other places, because you don't have the resources. Yeah. There's an argument yep. to be made that Franklin has maximized what can happen at Penn state. Unless some things change, there's an argument That's to be made. Really good point actually. So, so yeah. And it, it's tough. You know, I went there, it would, you know, it's hard to ask for more money from students because it's really fucking on for football. Yeah, exactly. So like, I get it. You're going to have to raise tuition and shit, but like, what do you want? Do you want to be an elite program? Like the schools yep, you claim to want to compete with, or do you want to kind of stay where you're at near the top and not quite there? So it, there's a lot going on there, but Hey, you know what? I was happy that the boys had fun. That's agreed. Yeah. Speaking and, of boys have fun. I'm so mad that Pitt sucks. I don't, the thing is, they don't. I, they I don't, don't suck. I don't but, think they but, suck. They, they don't were, suck. But what the fuck? It was a pit loss. It was a very yeah. Pit, but we already had one. I know. We already had one. Yeah, against a three and four Miami team. And the thing is, I don't think Kenny Pickett was bad. Kenny Pickett. No, Kenny Pickett's still the number one fucking quarterback yeah, in this draft class, which is crazy. He still put up over 300 yards, three touchdowns, and threw two picks, but. Kenny Pickett was not the reason they lost that game. It was no. just, it was Pitt. Just such a fucking Pitt game. And again, I I feel for Pitt fans, man. I really do because like I thought that these guys had. You can't put up twenty one points in the first and and think you're gonna win. It's that it's that it's that simple. Yeah. It sucks. But dude, they let up four hundred twenty six yards. I'm looking at the set. Kenny Pickett threw for fifty five attempts on thirty nine. Five nineteen yards, three touchdowns, and two interceptions. Like you should win. That's with that. that's yes. There's a no universe where that is a losing stat line. Unless you're in the Big Twelve, that's it. Unless you're in the Big Twelve, but like that's I don't I don't get it. It's just Pitt being Pitt, and that's not me even talking shit as a Penn State guy. No, just, no, it's very real. It's that's just Pitt. A, that's just a Pitt being Pitt. To thing. assume anything else was going to happen is just upsetting to your mental health. What's crazy is I bet on Pitt to. To cover, but there was something in the back of my head saying like maybe maybe they won't against Miami. Maybe this is the game, you know. Miami feels they're just one of those teams. Even, uh, and kid, Miami kid sucks, on the bus that used to sit but, in front of me that had a Miami hat on. I always think to myself, what is that logo? And I never ever asked anyone. Didn't think anything of it. And I remember getting the bus every day to school and every day home and seeing this dude's green hat with the orange U and saying, I don't know what this is for. And honestly, every time I see that logo, I think to myself, this, this is like PTSD of bus riding childhood. Yep. Like every bad bus ride I've ever had, I think of that logo. And ever since then, I just couldn't stand Miami. Yeah. I fuck with Miami, but I can't stand them. Yep. I gotcha. That was, it was tough, especially at home, like in a season that you were, the path was clear outside of Wake Super Forest. Super clear. Oh, it was it was paved. It wasn't like, even graveled. Like that's like they got over the clumps and hump. They were there. Yep. They were so close. Just it's a damn shame. Makes me sad. Um Auburn. I think I can't tell if that was just Auburn being really doing yeah. really weird shit at home, like they always do. <laughs> Auburn at home is weird. Because they are really fucking that. good at home. They pull off some shit every year at home. I can't tell if it's that or Bo Nix just might be good now. 
I don't think he's good. We already we already shit on him enough on the show. He's not good. I, I'm, I don't I, know, you, we, some eventually we have to take a stand. I don't know, dude. He hasn't really played that poorly. I know, but eventually we have to pick a side. I'm saying Bo Nix's ass. Dude, three three total touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns, 276 yards, 22 for 30. I get it. But also what I'm saying is we have shit on. And this is week 10. or well, week, what is it? Nine and a half. We have shit on Bo Nix enough on this show. More times than we haven't. We got to pick a side. I'm picking the side. He sucks. I don't know if he sucks. He's maybe he's just feeling he's feeling himself right now. Remember this next week when he sucks again and you go, no, he sucks. And then the next week when he's good again and you go, I, I just don't know. I want you to remember this moment that Derek Whiten said Bo Nix sucks. This might be the weekend for that to happen because they are playing. Uh, no, A&M. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, my God. This guy just I'm saying this. <laughs> this might be the week <laughs> uh, you're jinxing me now. Yeah. Oh, well, it does suck because last week, well, the week before, uh, I picked who was it? I picked uh, Arkansas, I think. To yes, beat Razorbacks. Auburn. And I, the my reasoning was that Bo Nix sucks, especially on the road. And yep, look, look at, at what happened. Point, at some point, and, we got to pick a side. And now, am I now gonna have to start betting on Auburn just to have that turn around? Maybe, like, just to make yes. us right. But, um. Yeah, Auburn, I think, might be good. I heard an argument today that Auburn is in control of their own destiny as far as the playoff goes. I'm like, that's kind of garbage because yeah. they have two losses and they're playing yeah. in the SEC. So, like, that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. But Fair. I, I do think Auburn's pretty good, though. Um, Hawkeyes. Sorry, Deke. Dude, no, it's cool because yeah. here's the thing. They did the they did the job, right? They, uh, they were good for long enough that now they're dead. But I will add... This is also, it's a sorry Deke moment, but it's also a praise Smalls moment because it's Wisco and they're good. Yep. And you've been mentioning, you're like, dude, I get it. They're Wisco, they're Wisco, but they're good. They're good. They're going to, you know what I mean? Yep. I feel like Iowa's uh, wheels have fallen off. We can now just wave at children without having to worry about winning. But yep. Wisco looked great in this game. Their defense is fucking outrageous. They held Iowa. Well, first of all, Spencer Peters fucking sucks. Through for yeah, 94, he's, 94 he's, uh, yards. 94 yards. Not my yards. quarterback, if you will. Yeah. Uh, on the ground, Iowa went for 24 yards. Yikes. And it's probably, it, Wisco's run D is fucking incredible. It's just but, like a man defense. Like, like, that's that's a group of men. Like, they are just incredible against the run. And Iowa, I think they, they were exposed enough on offense that people not. That's the thing. Graham Mertz still sucks. He barely tossed for over 100 yards. So yeah. it's not like Graham Mertz put up these crazy numbers. Uh, the defense won Wisconsin in this game, but I would, they're just so bad. It, yeah, it's kind of shocking that they're that bad. Like, that's our, the upsetting part. Like, and their defense is good, but their defense yeah. was the only reason they were even close to being good there for the longest time. And it's, Agreed. Yeah, I, I just don't. They were exposed, and now everyone knows that their offense is bad enough that it doesn't matter what the defense does. So, uh, all right. So, Deke, let's go into the rankings. Dude, this is crazy to me. So, at the bar, like, we literally were out celebrating. The guy who's had a strategy at my agency is a huge <laughs> Oregon's fan. So, he's like, yo, dude, you heading out? And I was like, yeah, I got my college football shirt tonight. He goes, ah, oh, you going to talk Ducks? Yeah. I was like, fuck you, man. I said, Cincy. And he's like, they haven't played anyone, man. Smalls, Cincinnati getting bucked behind Oregon, Michigan. I told him, I said, Oregon's not my issue here. Michigan State's kind of my fucking issue. No, Michigan State isn't my issue. Alabama's my issue. That's a good one, too. Alabama is my issue. Hear me out. Why the fuck is Mississippi State ranked? Why oh. Mississippi look, Mississippi State is not they're not twenty five they're not twenty they're seventeenth in the nation they are three and three and they got smoked by Bama fifty ninety nine you know what that tells me the playoff committee wanted a reason to put Alabama at number two that makes a lot of sense actually because I don't actually think Alabama knows what they're doing half the fucking time uh, also I have a question yeah were they three when they played Tennessee? Three or four. 
Yeah. Was it okay? Okay. I'm yeah. trying to remember because like I'm looking at the scores now. They smoked Mississippi State, obviously. They went to Tennessee. Tennessee put up more of a fight. Sorry, that's where I was going with this. It's just like I there's a perpetual like absolute need to put Alabama in the top four. Yep. Mississippi State sucks. Mississippi State. No, I just think they're simple. better than their record shows because they got fleeced against Memphis early in the year and they yeah. kept some games close, but they should Fair. not be 17th in the nation. No. Period. Um, Ole Miss. Like, it, they're just some, like, they lost, I, A&M being ranked as high as they are doesn't really make much sense to me. It's Iowa because, being ahead of Pitt pisses me off. I just want to throw that out there. Yeah. There's another, like, w- what do they, what goes through their head? And I know, yeah. so Oklahoma being ranked at eight didn't bother me because I know that they're frauds. No, they're but fucking it, frauds. But, Everyone knows they're frauds. But, like, I think people's issue is that Oklahoma Undefeated Alabama, dude, they went down to the wire against a Florida team that's like not a good team. I like, thought Florida was sucks. Take that one. Yeah, Florida yeah. sucks. And since he, yeah, like you said, fucking, they're getting screwed right now. They, I've talked about it before. The vacuum of talent that the playoff has created is alarming. And Agreed. anyone that watches college football should be concerned because. Dude, Sensi is a good fucking They need to team. expand. They need yep. to expand right now to eight at the bare fucking minimum. Yep. Like, they just they need to do something or just get rid of the fucking conference bias. Like, yep. I just, I don't fucking, I don't fucking get it. Oregon, I don't think that Oregon makes a lot of sense being that high outside of the fact no. that they beat Ohio State. That's the only reason they're there. Yep. That's because they lost to Stanford. Crawling back. Yeah, it, it, they dude, they won by a touchdown against one and what six Cal. Like Cal yeah. sucks. Like Oregon is not like that great. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. They're just there wasn't any many many that pissed me off here. Wake Forest being nine, I liked. Uh, I did like Auburn at thirteen after this recent week, yeah. even though Bo Nick sucks. I still have my flag there. Uh, I was kind of concerned with the fact that Minnesota's above Wisco because like Minnesota is another one that just and Wisco's <sighs> recency bias. Like that's yeah, what I'm that's saying. fair. That's, that's fair. what I'm saying. Minnesota, they haven't even sniffed the no. top twenty-five, and then the first playoff rankings come out. And Fresno State and happens. San Diego State are getting absolutely robbed out here. Like, yeah, and not only that, dude. Fucking uh, SMU, not not even. Yeah, what close. the fuck's that about? SMU, well, SMU they lost Houston, but Houston should have should have been ranked at the very yeah. least. Yeah, like Houston's seven and one. Bunch of bitches. Well, and that's it. It just it seems like they were out to get Cincy. Everything points to the fact that they do not want a group no. of five team in because they did not rank the teams that are. It, that's the best group of five conference in the country. Period. Yes, by far. And. The next two best teams aren't even in the picture. That to me is it's a big fucking red flag. Wake Forest, I feel bad for Wake Forest because if they run the table, they might be considered a group of five team because they don't yeah. have fucking Clemson's name. And the ACC does suck this year, but it's like the Wake ACC For- does. If Wake Forest runs the table, they might get left out, and that that's kind of shitty. So, yeah, like damn. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, every year. The committee fucking pulls this shit. They just suck. Shit. Like, it's so biased and stupid. Yeah, Jesus fucking Christ. And then Michigan, I get. I guess I get why they stayed kind of in the same. They stayed way too high for me. Oklahoma's undefeated. Yeah. Michigan isn't. That that one's simple for me. Like I get it. Oklahoma's frauds. We all agree on that. Michigan should be behind Oklahoma and probably Wake Forest at this point. Just, just make it. Iowa. Iowa nope. just should not be fucking ranked right now. No, sorry, they just should not after recency bias. If we're gonna put some other teams in there, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you're gonna put fucking Wisco over there, like up in yep. there because of recency bias, but you're not gonna drop not Iowa gonna out. Yep. Like, Jesus agreed. Christ. All right, Deke, what do you got? I have to pee first. Is that okay? Yeah, let me let me pause this ish. All right. So this week I wanted to talk on. I know all of my stuff has mainly been. Draft odds, uh, a little bit of risers, fallers, things like that. Mel Kuyper, Todd McShay, two of my absolute idols, came out with uh, their top 25, which then Mel followed up with his top 10 quarterbacks small. So uh, there's five guys that I do not give a shit about and five guys that I believe have a very significant impact on this draft. Uh, I would like to add, this is one of the weakest quarterback classes I've seen in a long time. Oh, yeah. Long time. 
So uh, let's start with number 10 here. Jaden Daniels, Arizona State sneaks in. Going to be honest with you, Smalls. No fucking clue who this kid is. Just yeah. plain and simple. Yep. Jaden, you know, I've heard of him. I've heard of him. But I believe of that, that you've heard of him. I, That's outside the of the fact, outside of that, yeah. Now, granted, there's a guy named Nate Stanley who came out of Iowa that I adored going into the draft saying the Steelers should take him in the seventh round and see what he has. Not doing quite so well. So what I'm saying is these next couple guys, I've heard of uh, two of them. So here we go. Uh, the next one is Tanner McKee out of Stanford. Uh, so he is at the nine spot. The eight spot, this is one of the ones I heard of, Hendon Hooker out of Tennessee. Go UT. Big Nashville guy. Uh, next one is the other guy that I've heard of, and that's Carson Strong out of Nevada. Uh, he worries me a little bit because I don't know who the fuck he is, but they keep talking about body type. You know, the last guy they talked about body type, Mitchell Trubisky. And the last guy that I've never heard of, don't give a shit about, Phil Jerkovic out of Boston College, which small do kid. love. Yes. Yep. Is he? Pine Richland, yep. Oh, yeah, Fuck big Phil. All right. I thought he was overseas. Uh, so here's <laughs> what I will say. Shout out the Smalls, continuously talking about how good Boston College is. All right, yep. Phil, you're now on my – let me put a star next to his name. Yep. I now know Phil Fluff. Fl- 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 yep. All right, let's get into the actual names that matter to Derek Whiten. At number five, it doesn't quite bring me joy that you and Greg were wrong, Smalls, but Sam Howe out of UNC coming in at five, being a, an absolute phony. Uh, we'll see how he does at the next level. Again, I don't despise the kid. I despise UNC quarterbacks because of Mitch Trubisky. But on a real level, I despise people that have not proven that they are an elite blue chip guy, but are given the capabilities, credit, and excuses to be that guy. Do I think Sam Howe is an absolute bust and won't be a good NFL quarterback? No. I think he has a decent floor. I think that his mechanics are good, and I do like him as a dude. So that's fine at five for me. Number four here, uh, and I think all of these names have been so set in stone that if you don't know what's coming next, you'll be a little surprised with yourself. That's Malik Willis out of Liberty. I'm very curious. Malik, in my mind, small, just so we're all on the same page, has the best chance to rise to the number one overall pick in my mind. Uh, there's obviously three guys ahead of him right now. Three guys that I think are having better seasons, three guys that I think are at better programs. There's something about Willis coming out of Liberty that has the potential to find himself in a very low quarterback class being traded up for in the same situation that Baltimore traded up. Granted, it was the 32nd pick, but I do believe a team that is ready to prepare their scheme for Malik Willis will trade up to get him because I do think he could have the best combine out of every quarterback in this class. At number three is the guy that I have been told is taken. Well, the next three guys will all be drafted by the Steelers per Yenzers. Uh, Ritter out of Cincinnati. I'm still upset because Cincinnati was taken out of the top four, pushed back in the rankings because they haven't played anybody, but they've looked great. Ritter seems like the ultimate game manager. Doesn't take many risks. Is a guy that a lot of franchises would love to bring in uh, to be a part of the program. I don't know if he has the X factor, and that's why I'm saying Willis could be a late riser. Liberty, obviously not as good as Cincy right now, but he could be up there. So I like Ritter a lot coming in three. Number two should not be a surprise. It's our favorite quarterback out of Ole Miss, Mackerel. Still, Smalls, it gets to this point with him where like he, I I think, should have been like a Heisman contender, despite what Ole Miss did. I mean, you have a great college coach. Lane Kiffin is a great college coach. Piece of shit, great college coach. But when you get in here, the dude should be putting up a little bit bigger of an I'm the Heisman type season, uh, which brings us to the number one quarterback, a guy near and dear to my heart. Let's grab some cold ones. Kenny Pickett out of pit. I do believe that he is the safest quarterback in this class. And what I mean by that is that he will not need schemes and systems. He's a guy that throws the ball. And I don't want to compare him to another guy that feels the same. He reminds me of Gardner Minshew. He can do a lot of stuff that other guys can't do. He might not be the Trevor Lawrence's of the world, but he will be the Gardner Minshew of the world. It seems like, so the comparison that I heard uh, for Kenny Pickett was Baker Mayfield, but a little better guys that didn't come in and had to, they had to learn the smarts first lunch pail guys and then develop the arm. So and that seems what Kenny that seems like what Kenny Pickett has done. I yeah. really I know he's a pickup, but I I really like Kenny Pickett. Like I think whoever I get, whoever nabs that guy is gonna get a really fucking good 
rookie quarterback. Yes. I think you're going to be very happy and you're going to get to a situation where you can put this guy into any game and he's going to perform better than 15 other quarterbacks in the NFL. Yep. Um, yeah, Malik Willis, uh, it, it's on our big games this week, but I want to see how he does against Ole Miss this week. That's fair. That's like one of the big first game. real tests. I think that he does, though, have the highest potential due to just everything we're about to see unfold. I don't think any of the top five quarterbacks are going to go to the playoff, barring since yep. he, you know, actually getting respected. So I do think that their, you know, bull games and what we can see moving forward will be the reasons. And I just think Malik is I mean, he's a tremendous athlete, highly sought after kid, and he is still a Heisman candidate that much later. Yep, absolutely. All right. I think we got a doozy for Mike Leach this week. He couldn't give me a shrunken head, so I got a T-shirt. All right. So this is not so much. Oh, I love this. Not so much a quote, but more a quote or title of all the articles about the weirdest <laughs> story in college football in a while. Um, So... If y'all have not heard this, go look it up. Um, there was a Texas assistant football coach who his wa- so his wife sent out like a neighborhood text, basically saying, "Hey, we have like a maze, for, you know, for all the kids. Um, you know, we'll you know we'll give you guys some candy, all that stuff." <laughs> they also have a pet monkey. Sorry, a- an emotional support monkey is what I think they're branding it as. They had to pry the, this monkey's jaws off this 12-year-old, and it seriously injured the kid. More comes out shortly after, where we learn that while this coach w- was at the University of Alabama, he left his wife and kids for a stripper named the Pole Assassin. Part of the pole assassins act was this very same monkey. Deke, there's a lot, a lot. There's a lot to unpack here, brother. <laughs> like, wow. So, first of all, the pole assassin, I'm not a big strip club guy. I've been once. But even me at a strip club, being the awkward guy that I am, if I hear, you know, if I hear the name up next, the pole assassin. I'm just going to, you know. You're- yeah, I'm going to need a lot to happen. <laughs> like, I'm going to need is- a lot to happen in this show. Part of it, which will be, should be assassination. Like, the pole assassin is one fucking bold name for a stripper. Yeah, there's two types of poles that walk into a strip club. and The type you dance on and the type you carry in. And I just am very concerned upon which she is assassinating. Yeah, that's a good or point. Or using to assassinate people. Yep, that's a good point. Uh, also, the fact that this guy left his wife and kids for a stripper named the Pole Assassin. I hope that's her legal name. I don't, I ma'am, doubt it, but wow. May I see your identification? Yes. The Pole Assassin. Pole. Pole Assassin. Um, and then the fact that... Then the, the monkey. Mo- <laughs> then we <laughs> get to the monkey biting a child. <laughs> like, so glad that we waited... <laughs> through the good part of the story we're at the boring part guys yep. they had to pry the monkey off the child's face yeah like seriously injured the child and apparently the kid i don't know was in a place that he w- like he was they're saying you know she was saying that he was trespassing and was not in an area of the yard that he was supposed to be in maybe you should lock your fucking monkey up yeah also you know, hear me like, out. kids kids kind of a bitch if something is biting my face I am gonna squeeze its skull till it dies. Maybe that I might think just be the mustache talking, but maybe. But I think you're underestimating how aggressive monkeys can be and how strong oh. monkeys are. I think I'm overestimating how much of a little bitch this kid is. Maybe I should maybe. apologize to the kid. Probably. Maybe. I, also, the pole assassin went straight to Twitter and started defending. The, the- oh my God! What's her Twitter handle? I hope it's the pole assassin. <laughs> I, I don't know if she's on Twitter anymore, but www.twitter.com backslash pull assassin. <laughs> um, but and also the fact that this guy left his wife and kids, it, like the fact that, well, yeah, there's a lot here. Um, the fact that he's coaching college football. Yeah. 
Yeah, and good for you, man. Yeah, good there, for you. there are guys out there that get fired for a lot less than this. Yeah, and like, and also, what did the monkey? What part in the act did the monkey? Like, what did the monkey bring to the act? I wonder. I think he he brought a, a, a whimsical fun, uh, <laughs> and he probably hear me out. I've seen Aladdin. He definitely robbed those motherfuckers. He would go around from table to table, stealing money, stealing bread, tossing it to the magic carpet. I've seen this tale before. Just an unbelievable, unbelievable headline. Un- it's great. Because it, it started off with a Texas assist- assistant coach, uh, his monkey, he had to pry his monkey's jaws off a child. And that by itself is like, holy shit, what's going on there? And then you dive deeper into it, and you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, this was uh, one of uh, one of probably, you know, being sensitive as I can to the job, one of the greatest, greatest headlines in sports history. Bishop Sycamore is up there because that's the thing. We're getting yeah. a lot of heaters this season. Like, people forget about Bishop Sycamore, Dude. but, like, yeah, the pole assassin. That's a great point. I don't know. I just want the world to know that Bishop Sycamore was ESPN's fault. The pole assassin, probably still ESPN's fault. Yeah, probably. I don't know how yet, but I think so. Yeah, absolutely. That's Um, a fucking great quote. It's just, wow, incredible. All right, big games. Um, Auburn A&M, obviously the biggest game of the week. Um, Fuck, we're tied. Whatever. Yeah, you went. I did project it last week that even if I, you know, had a bad week, we'd still just be tied. So yeah, um, I'm going to AM here. It's just more of a gut thing. I don't know why. I think Auburn's the better team, but yeah. it, it, people thought that about AM playing Alabama. So I'm going to go AM. It's it's a toss up for me because both these teams kind of have the same type strengths. Think of yeah, it. I'm kind of really upset you took AM because of me saying I think Bonix sucks. Yep. I'm kind of hand tied a little bit, so I'm obviously going AM despite me thinking that Auburn is probably uh, the better team. Yep. I think AM comes out of this one the winner. I think Auburn's getting a little too much hype right yes. now. It's yeah, like I some do. like Pitt. It's just too much hype. And just they a just, little too much. Just there it's gonna be a let down, unfortunately. Um yeah. Ole Miss Liberty, aka the Hugh Freeze Bowl. Uh I'm going. I'm going. Ole Miss here. It hurts to do it. I think it, they're. I think they what? I think they got. They're like a nine and a half point favorite. I think. Wow. I think Liberty would cover that. Because so I think, but Malik Willis is just isn't going to have enough SEC level talent around him. He's going to have to do almost everything. Um, not every because Ole Miss's defense is That's bad, right. but. I do. Th- it's just yeah, but a lot. Yeah, it's because Ole Miss. It's not like that's the thing. Liberty also lost to Syracuse this year, so mm. you know I just don't know if Liberty has that spark that they did last year. I'm gonna probably regret this. I think that uh, it's just literally the one thing that sticks with me. Well, there's two things that stick with me in this matchup. The first is that the last time that I thought a quarterback was. <laughs> Uh, obviously, I'm I am not comparing anybody to anybody. But the last time that I went to a game where it was quarterback versus big school, uh, the first one was Johnny Menzel versus Alabama. The second one was Lamar Jackson against Clemson. Uh, and they were games where it was just so fucking fun. I do believe Liberty will win this game. That's that's a the thing is, I wanted to do it. I, re- I really I really got to be different to. somewhere. Because I'm not picking the fucking frauds in the next three games. Yep. Uh, <laughs> uh, Wake Forest, UNC. Sam Hartman's a dog. So I'm I told you, Sam. Dude, he what number three in the nation in yards per attempt? Like this dude is fucking good. QB one, baby. Him and yep. Justin Fields, same season. Gods. Yep. And UNC also their defense just isn't that yeah, great. Fuck you, Sam Howell. Yep, I you, nice you know what's you know what's also weird. I always thought that Wake Forest UNC would be like a rivalry game. They only because of the way the divisions are set up. They only play each other once every like seven. Aren't they years. like down the road from each other. Yeah, it's weird. You would think it's it like an in-state thing. Yeah, but they play each other once every yeah. seven years. 
for that fact alone, give me Wake Forest. I feel like that's a UNC thing. They're like, we're so good at football. Yeah. I hate the UNC. I don't know why. Yep. Uh, who are you going with here? Wake Forest. Yeah. Fuck Sam Howe. Let's go, Harmon. Yep. I have a feeling Wake Forest might have a like letdown game. I don't know if it's going to be this one. No. Um, Michigan State Purdue. I thought about taking Purdue here just because of the letdown factor. It's a noon game. Actually, mm. no. Is it a noon? No, no, no. It's a three thirty game. Um, I would enjoy a letdown factor, but but I do think that Michigan State might be a little asleep, and Purdue also isn't a bad team. But I'm going Michigan State here. So. It's it's gonna be close. I do think it's gonna be pretty close because Michigan State seems to kind of play down to competition sometimes. I think it's Michigan State because I didn't pick them last week. That's it. Yep. Yep. Ohio State, Nebraska. Uh it's gonna be one of those games where it's a noon game and noon games at Nebraska are tough for some reason. Ohio mm-hmm. State's gonna come out sleepwalking after uh, what a lot of people are considering a big win over Penn State, just because we are, for some reason, we are one of the only teams that give Ohio State fits. Con- yeah, like every consistently, year, consistently, at the very least, like more consistent than anyone else. I, I don't think that the uh, the talent's gonna outweigh the game here. I think Nebraska isn't an awful team, especially at home, but Ohio State, I think it's gonna eventually run away with this one. Yeah, it's impossible for me not to pick Ohio State. Yeah, yeah. Not, on paper, it's not the biggest slate of games this week, but we'll, we'll see. Um, all right, don't tell my bookie. All right, so I've been kind of a mush lately. Went 0 for 5 last week, went 0 for 8 the week before. So I'm trying to change the juju a little bit. Going with the parlay this week. First one on the list, Clemson. Louisville. Love this. Fuck Clemson because they gave me the baddest beat I've ever had. Deke, did you see that last touchdown? No. <sighs> Holy shit! So they were up four against Florida State. And oh my god! Yes. The oh my god! The, the oh hook my, and yes. ladder with and zero time on the clock. That was the worst it, beat it was ever. A fucking backdoor cover. Because it was nine, right? Nine and a half. Oh my god! And they won by ten. It was zero time left. It was. I was furious because I've been fading Clemson against the spread all fucking year. And you know what? I'm going back to it because fuck those guys. I'm doing it out of spite. They're still one and seven against the spread. So I'm going Louisville here. Uh, UTSA. I do think they're going to cover. They're second in the nation against the spread. They're really fucking good against the spread, and they're also just a really good team. Uh, I'm get, I got them covering minus 11, and then you got to fade the Jayhawks. Kansas is like 1-7 and seven against the spread all year. They're an awful team. Can't, it's a big line, but Kansas State, I think, is going to fucking pommel Kansas. So I'm getting a little parlay action, and part of it, really, I just want to change some, some shit up because I've been on – I was on a heater for a little bit. I'm kind of, you know, I've cooled off considerably, so I wanted to switch it up a little bit and fuck Clemson. Here's the one thing I'll add. Kansas was the best, best team in, I've ever seen in football for three minutes. Yep. That, actually, probably a whole. It was a whole half. A whole half, yeah. yeah. But that's, oh, there was three minutes where I thought it was happening. Uh, honestly, a weird situation with the Utsa versus the UTEP. Because I feel like in my mind, they're identical schools. Very much not identical schools. In my mind, they're the exact same school when it comes to betting. So I'll be interested to see what that one is. And also, fuck Clemson. Fuck. Fuck Clemson. That burned me so much. That is That was such a bullshit touchdown at the end. God It was terrible. It. That, it really was. What's crazy is like the entire nation was in an uproar about that. Because like so many people had... Florida State covering, and like I went on Twitter right after, and I was like, it, like everyone was like, "You got to be fucking kidding me!" Dave Portnoy lost what, like a hundred grand on it. Yes, like, like it was that short of a thing, and then fucking backdoor cover. Um, all right, Max. All right, so Maxion is back. Action is back. They're actually playing right now as we speak. 
Oh yeah. Uh, Matt, I love Wednesdays. It's, it's that time of the year. They had some games yesterday, and then they had this magical touchdown. Like that's the most magical thing of all time. Like yeah. Yep. Other than a, an onside kick to start the year, this is it. You know, this it's just so fucking fun to watch. Um, and then I am gonna. I already put my bet in. I don't know what the score is. I'm actually gonna check the score. But Northern Illinois uh, is pretty good against spread, and Kent State just isn't. So Northern Illinois is overall actually a pretty good team, and they're coming in as a dog. So I'm oh my god, <laughs> what is it? 38-21, Kent State. God damn it, dude. Hey, no, it's fine. It's early. It's only in the third quarter. It's early. It's, in the third it quarter. is it is super early. Some would say there's still an entire half of football left to play. Yep. No, it, it's early. I feel I feel fine. I put this in in together before the game started. So no, no. That good. Well, honestly, Kent State put up 31 in the second. So oh shit, yeah. I'm I'm looking at the box right now. That's Jesus Christ. What the fuck? That's happened? tough. It was 31. <laughs> to 21 going Jesus into half Christ. oh my god all right here's uh, the thing that means that means though that northern illinois huskies have the ball back probably yep. they're marching down the field because that was a quick touchdown to start the third northern illinois is going to score here make it 21 or uh, 28 to 38 they're down by 10 yep. they have an entire easy. game left easy. easy i just need him to easy cover money. man i just need him to cover uh um, easy money plus maxions wild sometimes so you never really know yep. what's gonna happen Onside kicks galore yep i'm gonna turn it on right after we get off here so uh also the guy t- cu- uh catching this touchdown matt hippenhammer yes. first of all the fun <laughs> the funnest name to say in college football. name mac hippenhammer. is it wait is it better than tank uh it's close. I think Tank okay. Tank Bigsby is a great Tank football Bigsby name. is. Oh. Yeah, I think that takes a cake. Uh, but Mac Hippenhammer. He Hippenhammer's fun. He he was a Penn State receiver as of a year or two ago. Mm. He played on the base baseball team there too. So Hippenhammer's just, a good name. Yeah, he just he wasn't really quite as good as some of the other guys. He didn't come in as highly touted, so he just didn't yeah. really get as many looks. So good for that guy. Uh, wanted to give give a shout out to Hippenhammer. Hippenhammer. <laughs> great name uh, um all right all right well you know <laughs> i actually i didn't really mind that loss that much because if anything it was we had nothing to lose players played pretty well coaches schemed as well as they could defense played well clifford looked like he was healthy again just one of the, it was one of those games you're playing a much better opponent uh it's Ohio State. And that's it. All I can hope for now at this point is we get some of our swag back against Maryland. I really and I think we will because Maryland fucked us up last year. So I I, I really hope it's gonna be a bloodbath and we embarrass those fuckers. Um kinda at this point, I just wanna like I wanna make some shit happen. I wanna really ruin Jim Harbaugh's season. And I think a loss to Penn State would definitely do that. At this point, there's no pressure, and I'm just going to have fun with it. So, that was PSU talk this week. I have a very, I have a much better outlook on it. Yeah. You're not so like game. suicidal. That's cool. Yeah. I fuck with that for you. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, you know, at last week, it showed that the team, Franklin didn't lose the team, which has happened yeah, before. Yeah. Which is big. Yep. It's happened before, and he, they played well. I think if anything, I know. Obviously, I'm gonna say this. I think we're a better team than five and three. I truly believe that because I think this weekend proved it. Yep, and because you got and you got Iowa. The loss to Iowa was Sean Clifford getting hurt for a half after yep. he was just marching up and down the field, uh, and then he clearly wasn't. It was we definitely laid an egg against Illinois, but again, Clifford wasn't healthy. So no no excuses, but Clifford wasn't healthy. I think if John Clifford doesn't get hurt against Iowa, it's a different different story right now. We we would at least be six and two. Maybe we, yeah. you know, I don't know what would happen, but you know I'm I'm happy that we're not a terrible football team. Yeah, I'm happy you're happy because you've been pretty rough these past couple weeks. You know. Yep. No, I, my I was watching the game with my girlfriend and uh, she was a little freaked out that I wasn't. Just going off, off the because Ohio State, like that's one of the games that I just go off for, and sometimes the neighbors. She's like, "Are you okay? You're not screaming." 
Yeah, and, uh, and she was like, I'm actually getting a little freaked out by how, how calm <laughs> you are. And I'm like, yeah, the boys are just out there having fun, you know? Yep, that's what the so, boys do, baby. Absolutely. All right, Deke, uh, cheers, buddy, even though not drinking course, that's fine. Cheers, my guy. Good show as always. I'm happy Penn State's not as terrible as we thought they were. Yep, absolutely. Fuck Clemson. Um, still burned about that. Hey, go Assholes. donate. Go donate to Movember, please. Um, and shout out Benny Buckets. Shout out Benny Buckets. Shout out Coors. Shout out Benny Buckets. All right. Peace, Deke.